Hello and welcome to another Dr. Spotfire quick tip video. My name is Jose de Aguirre from the data science team here at Spotfire and I hope you like the new logo. This is the Spotfire, it's a nice little owl and uh, well today I'm going to show you how to transfer values from rows selected from a visualization or a table and pass them into a document property. So this is a video, this is a request from you guys. You requested uh, help on, on this particular uh, use case. So I'm going to show you how it's done. And it's also part of my previous quick tip video where I show you how to write back on the database. So I use this use case to transfer the values, but I didn't cover in detail how it's done. So let's get started. Here I have a data set from, uh, that I got from Kaggle and it's just uh, the FIFA players and uh, let's say that I want to make an update if this uh, data set comes from, 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 a data, from a database. Let's say I have that information in the database and I want to make changes that I covered in the previous uh, Dr. Spotfire quick tip video. Uh, so if I select uh, multiple rows, it's going to take the first row and it's going to parse the values and put them in these document properties. And then you click this button and then you can run a data function or, or uh, refresh uh, an information link that's going to update the database or whatever you might be. So I'm going to cover how to transfer those values, the ones I selected into these document properties. So if I select one of the rows, you can see that I'm just picking the name, the age and the date of birth passing into these document properties. So how this is done? Well, the first step is to create a document property for each of the columns that I'm going to, that I'm interested in, in grabbing. So for example, uh, the name, the age and the date of birth, I have them here, I go to my document properties and you can see here in the properties that I have one um, a, a variable or document property for each one of the columns. Now I have this other one and this other one comes from a data function. I'm going to explain you how this, this works. So basically it's a data function that uh, is very simple. The input and the output is going to be taken and then is going to create this output, which is the concatenation of all these values separated by, by a pipe in this case. And then uh, this document property that holds this string is going to run a script that is going to parse, this is an Iron Python script that is going to parse those value into each document property. So let's go to the data function. And uh, so this is the data function. Let me show you uh, the script definition. So I go to edit the script and it's very simple. The script, it doesn't matter if it's, um, if it's a Python or R, uh, it, I'm using a, just a regular variable. In, um, in Python, is, this is equivalent. So this is my input and this is the output, but since the input and the output is the same, I like to keep things simple and just put one single variable. Uh, the same goes for R. If I want to do this in R, then I, say, well, the X, uh, it's going to be, my, my input is Y and the output is X. Uh, so that's how that's how it's done. But it, it, it also works with a simple, simple variable, it doesn't matter if it's Python or not. So once I have that, I define my input and my outputs. So in this case, my input is the X, it's going to take any value. Let me go to edit. So when you are defining the, the parameters on your, of your function, the input parameter is X and you can take any value because I have a mix of data types. I have integers, I have dates and I have strings. So the same goes for the output parameter. The output parameter in this case, I'm defining as a single value. So it's the same X parameter, the same as the input and that's the script definition. I'm gonna say no here because I already have it stored. And then um, when I run the script, I'm going to define the parameters and here is the tricky part. So when you run the function and you define the parameters, you say that X is going to be an expression and this expression is nothing but a custom expression that is going to take the first value of the first column and then concatenate it with a pipe. And then you, you do that for each individual column. So it's going to create that pipe separ separated strings that is gonna be parts later on. It's very important that you have the refresh function automatically and that you have the mark rows uh, limited by, by this marking. So that's that and I'm going to show you the next step. So let me uh, edit this HTML and add this, uh, this uh, label, this document property because that's the output of my data function, that document property and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, having this, this string. So let me put that string there and uh, it's right at the beginning. So let me just move it here at the bottom or at the beginning is fine just for debugging purposes. 
So that's that's the string, and you can see that it's separated by pipes and it corresponds to any each one of them. So when I click here, it also have is is, is, this, is this string. So so at this point we only have this document property updated whenever I, I select. If I select multiple, it's going to take the first value of the row. Now, uh, how do I parse this into separate document properties? That's where I go to my uh, document properties and assign a script for that document property. So whatever this uh, document property changes, it's gonna trigger this script. So I edit the script and the script is uh, right here and the script if I edit the script is going to um, uh, get read this document property that is the concatenation of the strings and it's going to split it uh, with this uh, character this is the comma separated character in this case is is a pipe but it can be a comma or any other character that you you might choose and it's going to return an array so the first value of the array is going to be assigned into my first document property which is the name and then I do that for each uh, uh, for each of the, the, the other columns. The second value uh, corresponds to the age and the third value to the date of birth. And that's it. Basically, that's it. Uh, and that's how it works. So uh, thank you for your feedback. Thank you for, for, um, uh, for your comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time on the next uh, Dr. Spotfire Quick Tip video.